Got great ideas, but no idea how to build a website? Get Bluehost. Their AI design tool creates high-quality WordPress sites super fast. Whether you're a blogger, influencer, or launching a side hustle, Bluehost helps boost your growth with built-in marketing and e-commerce tools. Upgrade to cloud and get 100% uptime and 24-7 security to stay online all the time. Why wait? You've got the vision. Make it real. Visit Bluehost.com to get started. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. Okay, I have a question for you. Have you ever donated any money to Wikipedia? I knew you probably haven't, but we've all seen the banner. Elon Musk wants to give Wikipedia, get this, the biggest donation it's ever had. One billion dollars on one condition that it changes its name to D word Apedia. So the D is um, I don't know how to say this. Uh, it has four letters. <laughs> D word Apedia. You know, Elon's had a long standing feud with Wikipedia and he said that it's just full of crap. And I agree. But it's another example of Elon Musk making a great point and following it up with, well, something that a 12 year old would do. By the way, this is going viral on social media but it actually happened about a year ago. And according to Wikipedia, India is the world's largest producer of spices. But then again, you should always take stats from the internet with a, ready for it, pinch of salt. Ooh, yes, buckle up, because everything that we're talking about today is has to do with all things digital. And it's my goal, Kim Commando, America's beloved digital goddess, as I sit here right now to make sure that you are always tech ahead, because let me tell you, you do not want to be tech left behind in the dust. Hey, by the way, you can find my award-winning show on over 420 top radio stations throughout the United States. Of course, we're streaming in your favorite radio app. And you can also get the Kim Commando Show as a podcast in your favorite podcast player. Just search for My Last Name Commando. And a big hello and salute goes out to all of our listeners on the American Forces Network Radio. Love this. Reaching over 375,000 U.S. service members in 175 different countries and 200 ships at sea. All righty, then every single day I visit at least, oh, I don't know, 35 to 40 different sources to make sure that we both know what's happening in the tech world. And here are the top five things that you need to know right now. And this has to be one of the weirdest scams that I've ever heard of. Oh, my gosh. Let's just call it the funeral that never ends. Here's how it works. When someone passes away, scammers immediately go to work and they create a Facebook group for the deceased person. Then they reach out to friends and family telling them the correct time and date of the funeral. Now, remember, this is all being done by scammers. So they're told that the funeral will be live streamed and they can watch the service by clicking the link okay, sent by the scammers. The link prompts them to pay a fee with a credit card. Then they're immediately linked to the funeral. But the funeral is fake. Hey, I'm not making this up. It's all coming from a guy in Bangladesh. He hires actors and the funerals are happening nonstop 24-7. And some of the grief-stricken mourners here in the United States, they have no idea that this has ever happened. And if you put this money on your credit card, well, you'll probably get it back. But if you pay with Venmo or anything like that, uh, go ahead. Try to get your money back from this guy in Bangladesh. Uh, moving on to number two, have you heard about Meta's invention? It's called brain decoding. Meta says it's using what they call a non-invasive neuroimaging technique. In plain English, all this means that they're taking thousands of brain activity measurements every single second. So they have lots and lots and lots of data points. Now, they're using this neuroimaging tech similar to like an MRI, but they show participants an image. Then the participants thought about an image and boom, an almost identical image pops up. So for example, think an airplane. Well, suddenly your brain sees an airplane and then that tech actually knows that you are thinking about an airplane. I saw the video. It works. These replicated images are almost spot on compared to what the person was actually thinking. So Meta says like this tech could be helpful for folks who have neurological issues who have lost their ability to speak, which is just Fabulous. I love that. But we all know what Meta will do with it. Yeah, they're going to be reading our minds. Uh, moving on to number three, have you watched The Golden Bachelorette yet? We've got Joan Vassos, this 
gorgeous 61-year-old woman meeting all these potential life partners. But maybe that's not your cup of tea. Let me tell you, Joan's not alone looking for love over 50. Pew Research says that 62% of all adults over 50 are flying solo. And guess what? They're swiping right online, that is. The over 50 crowd isn't on Tinder. Have you heard of Silver Singles? That's where you can dive into a personality test. They'd ask you if you care how tall your date is or what degree they have. You can even see if they're likely to kiss on a first date. Okay, the downside... The photos are blurry unless you pay, wow, 40 bucks a month. Now, for those of you who want love match and a faith match, there's J-Date, Christian Mingle, or Catholic match. And if you're looking for a free option, there's senior match. All right, moving on to number four. Wow, it's called text pesting. Yes, text pesting. This is a new techno term for you to know and love and remember. Uh, what it stands for is, well, It's an irritating, harassing, and downright creepy text message aimed directly at women. So here's how it works. At major airports, for example, young women report receiving a text message telling them, oh, you are so beautiful. I love that outfit that you're wearing. Would you like to go out with me? Hmm. But the message is from a total stranger. Well, the guy saw her pick up her bag at the luggage carousel. So how did he get her number? From the luggage tag, right? Many luggage tags have names and phone numbers easy to read as they ride on the luggage carousel. So what you want to do is always make sure that if you have a luggage tag with your phone number, your address on it, use one of those ones that actually cover it up. Or better yet, you can always use your office address and your office phone number. All right, finally, this coming in at number five. When buying a new smartphone, there's one brand that holds its value better than all the competitors. Okay, I want you to think about it. Which brand is that? Is there a make and model? Okay, so to get more money out of your old phone, you always want to buy the one that holds the value longer. And I wanted to bring this up because so many people are buying new phones this time of year. And there's always been this rivalry going on between Android owners and iPhone owners for years and years and years. But like new cars, smartphones lose their initial value quickly. And people do one of three things with their old phones when upgrading. Okay, what do they do? Maybe they're like, hey, I need to keep it as a backup. Or, um, I don't know, maybe the spouse, partner, mom, dad, kids, you know, pass it on to a family member. Or they're like, nah, I'm just going to trade it in. It's the easy way. I may not get the most money. Or I'm actually going to try to sell it. So think about that. Which phone holds the longest value, the highest value? Okay. Ready for the answer? Apple's iPhone. That's right. iPhones always will bring in a higher trade. So if you're selling, you're going to get more money than an Android. Regardless of the model of the iPhone, compare it to from apples, I guess you'd say, to, well, oranges. If value is important, you always want to buy an iPhone. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about some clues that you're actually talking to a romance scammer. And I have a quick Wi-Fi fix. Oh, how you can get some really important alerts from your smart speakers, too. And, of course, we have all of your great phone calls. You don't want to miss that. And you don't want to miss me, Kim Commando. So stay right where you are. Tuesdays at Papa Murphy's, you can get any large pizza for just $12. We call it Take and Bake Tuesday. Take and Bake Tuesday. Terrific title. Terrific title for a tasty treat at just $12. That's Take and Bake Tuesday. Try it today at Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. All right, just go here right now. Winfromkim.com. Once again, winfromkim.com. That's where you can enter to win a brand new iPhone 16 Pro with Apple Intelligence. No purchase required. Go to winfromkim.com. All righty, then let's start with all of your phone calls. Um, Ben in Boise, Idaho, glad to have you on board with us. Hey, Kim, how are you this afternoon? Good, you have a great voice. Oh, well, I thank you. Yours isn't bad either. (laughs) Okay, excellent. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I should start making money with this voice one day. What do you think? (laughs) Yeah, I I think you're in the right work, the line of work. I am, I am. So what's going on? Hey, so I've got a weird situation where I have a copy of a copy of a survey that was done in 1969, and I have exhausted every resource trying to find a more uh, a clearer copy of it. And every you know the surveyors retired, probably deceased at the point, and uh, you weren't required to record surveys until 1974, so the city doesn't have any record of it. And the note section that calls out all the key points and the, you know, boundaries and how the surveyor came to his conclusions, you just can't read it clearly because it's just so fuzzy and 
uh, partial letters missing and whatnot. And I really want to know what that surveyor's intents were and what it said. So I what are what uh, are you expecting to any... what are you expecting to to gain from restoring the survey? What are you looking? Are you trying to solve a puzzle or something like that? I am. So I've got a uh, commercial property we run our business out of, and an out-of-state developer has come in and is trying to put in a new development on 10 feet of my property. And so um, they hired an out-of-state survey company to come do a survey saying whatever they wanted it to. And so this, I've got all my back, or all my other documents and everything that back up in uh, my case and everything, but we're just really curious what that original survey said more than anything to see if it's got any yeah, so solid information that uh, would strengthen my case at all. But, but yeah, give it, give it another angle maybe for what the original intent was, right? You know, Correct. it's, it's, uh, it's always interesting when we talk about surveys. I don't know if you ever heard this, but, you know, Arizona was supposed to have uh, a beach, and so, really? but, yeah, but Isn't when the whole state of beach, yeah, no, it's a, it's a big sandbox. <laughs> that's what it is, but it's not quite a beach. Uh, there's mountains in the North. Um, but so but what happened was this legend goes is that when they were surveying this part of the country so many years ago is that they, that when they were walking it and you know, on horseback is that they made a wrong turn. <laughs> so, so instead of going all the way down to what is now Mexico, they said, oh, let's make a right here. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they went, they went right, and they're like, oh, we got to go up to California. Okay. And then they went up to California. So if the surveyors did their job, I'd be sitting here having, we'd be on the beach in Arizona instead of in the desert. But anyway, uh, there are a couple of documents that you can use. There's one, uh, one AI tool called Vance, V-A-N-C-E. Um, you know, it's really made to... It has a photo restoring tool, but okay. uh, it has done, what I've read about it is that it, it actually has done some work with old historical documents that were tattered like from the 1700s, 1800s, and it's oh, wow. in trying to figure out exactly what it was. I don't know what the cost of this is, but um, something that you might want to use again, it's called Vance AI. Um, I don't know if this one will work for you, but I'm just going to tell you about it because it's free. It's uh, Scan Taylor, and that's T A I L O R Scan Taylor. Uh, and another one is called Abby A B B Y Y. Uh, that may also help. But I, it's you know, it's going to be tough. It really is. Uh, but I, I hope that some of these tools might be able to work. You know, just for giggles, what I would do is scan a part of it and then okay. upload that to chat GPT using the latest model, not the O, which is really for writers and editors. But if you use uh chat four O like the letter O, okay. I would, I would upload that and say, you know, tell me what this might say. Try to fill in the blanks for the, what would a server Surveyor in the 1970s in Boise, Idaho. What might this document have said? And okay, perfect. You, you never know what's going to come back with, right? Who knows? Maybe no, totally. You maybe in its database, they found this guy from the 1970s book <laughs> that it sucked in the know-how about this particular section of Boise, Idaho. Because, I mean, literally, AI read every piece of printed material in the world. So. Yeah, that's just incredible. It, you know what? Yeah. It's, and it's all copywritten. They just stole the heck out of it. Now they're making money off of it, but here nor there. Uh, but when it comes time to, to using AI, um, you know, and, and it's something that I think we have to think about this tool in ways that we never thought about it. Like, I was on a, a plane last night. And I was sitting next to my son. I said, you know, we, you know what? And we got to plan a trip for after Christmas. And so we're sitting there talking. And and so we decided that, okay, we'll go to Paris. And then I said, you know, dad wants to go to Berlin. So we'll go to Berlin. And then Ian's like, well, let's go to Geneva. And I said, well, I don't know if there's anything to see. And I've never been to there. And, and then 
he said to me, he said, let's ask chat where we should go. I'm like, oh, okay. Huh. And so uh, chat came back and said, you don't want to go to Geneva because in the winter, there's not a lot to do on the lake and, you know, or in the mountains, unless you <laughs> ski, uh, you know, Berlin would be great. You should spend two days there and then you should go to Vienna, uh, then go to London. I mean, and then listed hotels and activities for each, each city. And I was like, oh, that's incredible. I know. I was like, wow, this is really something. And then plan the trip for the least amount of air travel between city to city or preferably when to take the train. Like, oh. Well, that'll save a lot of hours of planning family vacations. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, take a little, you know, take a little scan of it, see what happens, and then do me a favor. Let me know if chat was able to, like, fill in the blanks for you. So curious, as well as if any of those tools actually helped out for you. You might want to try Adobe's scan, too. They are really, really putting a lot of AI efforts into those products because Adobe knows more than anything right now. If you don't innovate, you're going to evaporate. All right. I don't know if you've checked out Google Earth, but, you know, I know we all use Google Maps, but Google Earth is really something. You know, Google's mapped out at least 98% of the entire world, and you can see it all on Google Earth. Now, I know you're saying like, well, I don't really have a lot of use for Google Earth. Well, think about this. Here's a really cool thing you can do. You can make custom journeys and then share them with your friends and family. Basically, you can morph some maps into a visual travel scrapbook. And when you're doing this, you can spotlight different points of interest that you pick out. So let's say you want to map out a trip to Paris, for example. So you open up Google Earth and then you drop a pin, say, right in the center of Paris. And then you can add a note and then... Add a picture that highlights your trip right up the Eiffel Tower. And then you could drop a pin on the Louvre and then add a little note and picture about your time there. Maybe you like actually tried that picture that everybody tries to do. And I tried to do, I couldn't do it. It's like where you stand far enough from the Louvre and it looks like a pyramid. And it's, and if you position your hand properly, it actually looks like you're holding it in your hand. So if you haven't tried this yet, you know, just fire up Google Earth. It's a lot more fun than you're watching TikTok videos and then see if you can actually map out a journey. I'll tell you, it's really amazing. All right, still to come, we have more of your phone calls as well as that quick fix for your Wi-Fi here on the Kim Commando Show. When you visit a state as big and diverse as Texas, there are a million different trips you can take. Let's say you've got an appetite for whitewater kayaking. You can get your own. So this is why they call it Devil's River. Trip to Texas. Or maybe you have an actual appetite. I'll take a pound of brisket, six ribs, uh, three links of sausage, and a, a piece of pecan pie. Trip to Texas. Go to TravelTexas.com slash get your own for the only trip to Texas that matters. Yours. Okay, so you're sitting there and you get a DM and you're like, who is this person? And they're like, oh, you're the love of my life. I always wanted to meet someone just like you. We have so much in common. Would you like to leave Facebook and then get onto WhatsApp and you're like, wow, he or she is so hot. Of course. I mean, wow, this could be the person I've been waiting for my entire life. Well, you know, maybe it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but probably 99% of the time you're getting scammed. So I have some clues that you're actually speaking to a romance scammer coming up. And then later on, if your Wi-Fi is poking along, it could just be one thing that you're doing wrong. I'm going to tell you more about that. And then we have, of course, some more of your great phone calls. But first, let's talk about something that is really important about your smart speakers. They're not just waiting for you to say the wake word. They can also listen in for some really important things like smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. So imagine you're out when suddenly a fire starts at your home. Your smoke alarm goes off and then your smart speaker will hear it. And now instantly you can get an alert on your phone. I tell you, this is really something. I mean, I have a home in California and I have a home here in Phoenix. And in Phoenix, I actually got an alert about the smoke detector going off in my Santa Barbara home. And um, as it turns out, it was just a false alarm because I had somebody doing some work there inside the house. But it was really like, wow, this is really something. So here's how to set it up. And spoiler alert, there is a monthly charge. On your Echo speaker, you want to subscribe to Alexa Emergency Assist. It's about five bucks a month. 
In your Alexa app, you toggle on smoke and CO alarm sounds. That's it. You're done. Your Echo will notify your phone if it detects an alarm. Now, for Google Home, open the app, tap settings, and turn on sound detection. You'll need a Nest Aware subscription starting at 8 bucks a month. The smart speaker settings can make all the difference in an emergency. All right, back to the phones we go. Speaking of emergencies, Phyllis in Louisville, Kentucky. Hi there, Phyllis. Hi, Kim. It's an honor to talk to you. I read your newsletter every day. Um, In your newsletter, you mentioned you have an emergency pack. Yes. Uh, What do you have in your emergency pack? Well, I will tell you that I'm not in charge of the emergency pack. Uh, My husband is. And I, for example, like he has food for four people for 28 days. And so one day he uh, came to me not over the summer and he's like, you know what? Let's go down to the emergency pack and let's make one of the dishes. Okay. And so I'm like, all right, I'm I'm game, you know, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) And then I looked at him like beef stroganoff. What are you thinking? (laughs) Like, okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> that is just not my idea of a, of a meal. I'll just, I'll, I'll have peanut butter and crackers before I eat that. <laughs> okay. So, but there's enough food. There's at least one gallon of water per person per day for at least three days. Duplicate meds for, for what he takes. Um, granola bars, dried fruits. Then you want to label everything. First aid kits, flashlights, uh, solar chargers for all of your devices and power banks. And and copies of important documents in a waterproof bag. You can put it in a safe, even better. Uh, a lot of people mm-hmm. will put it inside the refrigerator, tucked in the back. A hand crank radio, because what if cell phone service goes down? And then you have stuff that you need for your person, like, I know, toilet paper, <laughs> uh, hands, you know, hand sanitizer, trash bags, moist toilets, uh, you know, things that, that you can make you... Like, feel like you just took a shower if you're not able to. And here's the, here's the thing, Phyllis. I'll tell you right now. My, I don't know if you get this from listening to the shows and the newsletters, but my glass is always more than half full. But when it comes to what I see happening in the world, I fully endorse what Barry's doing. Because I really think that we are in unprecedented times. And I know that every era says that. But I really see some things that I don't like happening on a global level, not just in a community level. I'm talking about on a global level, like, you know, we have 170 million Americans on TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. What if Beijing decides to send down a message that we're sending a, a missile to the United States to every single one of those phones, which they can do. Everybody's everybody's talking about the data. Okay. China has all of our data. I'm not worried about the data. I'm, I'm not happy that they have it. And I don't use TikTok, but I'm sure that they subscribe to these different services that sell all the data. I'm really concerned about a national security thing. Uh, and that thing being really bad. And I, that is what the government is concerned about. So when they talk about banning TikTok, because... Imagine, Phyllis, the chaos if that were to happen. Can you even think of that? Well, the the floods and the, the hurricanes are a prime example of people not being ready, and it's scary as I'll get out. And that was, I'm not sure how many people that was, but it was 177 million. Exactly. And, they, and, and you know what? And, you know, they knew it was coming, but a lot of people said we're just going to hang where we are. Oh, wow. From my experience, if I knew that was coming, I'd be eight states over. It's, so it depends upon your family, depends upon what you need. But I just, um, again, my, my glass is always more than half full, and I've been very blessed so many ways in my life. But I just really think that, that it's very prudent for all of us to have our emergency stash and, and that's and I think you're talking about in the newsletter we put together one for tech, you know, emergency tech that you should have, and we've got that list over on the website. And um, and I think you know what? Let's let's talk a little bit more about this at some point in the newsletter where we can give specifics on what you should put in that. You know, the government has a whole website, ready.gov. Hmm, 
Why do they have that? Let's all think about it. Ready.gov. That's where you can actually get a whole list of stuff that you need for uh, a kit to have in your home for your family and, and, and your pets and everybody else around you. Ready.gov. Uh, Phyllis, thanks for embracing everything that we do. Here's a hug to you. Ooh, hug for Phyllis. Thank you. All right. I get this call all the time on the show. Help, it's bad. I just lost all of my savings to someone who I met online who said that they wanted to marry me. You know, gosh, it just really bothers me because then they are like, my money's gone. Can I get it back? No, you can't. So how do you know if the person that you're speaking to online is for real or is just another romance scammer? And let me tell you, right before and right around the holidays, the romance scammers come out in full force because they know that so many of us are lonely. So I want you to listen up. So here are three things to look for. One, the guy or gal that you're speaking to is really, really good looking. Okay, fraudsters like to steal photos from models. So what you want to do is take that photo and run a reverse Google image search and see if that picture pops up anywhere else on the internet. Number two, they never want to meet you. They might also avoid video calls or have a crappy internet connection just so they don't have to do video calls. And if they do a video call, it could be an auto fake that just repeats itself gently, like say every minute or so. And then they'll say, oh gosh, I don't know what's going on with my internet connection. Uh, number three, they send you links to click on because these could be something like malware that they're getting onto your system. And really bottom line here, if someone ever asks you for money, it's a total scam. All right, still to come, we have more of your great phone calls as well as that quick fix for that pokey Wi-Fi here on the Kim Commando Show. When you visit a state as big and diverse as Texas, there are a million different trips you can take. Let's say you've got an appetite for whitewater kayaking. You can get your own. So this is why they call it Devil's River. Trip to Texas. Or maybe you have an actual appetite. I'll take a pound of brisket, six ribs, uh, three links of sausage, and a, a piece of pecan pie. Trip to Texas. Go to TravelTexas.com slash get your own for the only trip to Texas that matters. Yours. All right, back to the phones we go with uh, Bruce in Toledo, Ohio. Hi there, Bruce. Hi, Kim. How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. What's going on? Well, I got in trouble with Amazon, and I knew I was in trouble when I got... My echo, uh, beside my bed, spoke to me at 4 a.m., and I don't know what it said because I was sleeping. <clears throat> but uh, I best, I, my best guess is that it was saying that it had been deregistered, and, and that's when I found out that my Amazon account was put on hold. Oh, well, how did all that happen? And I'm sorry that, that your echo woke you up at 4 a.m. You were probably like in this great dream that would, would have given you the invention of your lifetime. And then you would have been a billionaire. But no, Amazon had to interrupt your dream. <clears throat> well, I've been a long time. Oh, by the way, I'm a long time uh, reader of your uh, newsletters, and it's been great. I think you're a trusted voice that is really needed when it comes to technology. But anyway, uh, a couple of weeks before this happened, uh, I had some fraudulent charges on my Amazon Prime credit card. And <clears throat> as a result, it got canceled and I got a new one. Okay. And I, I looked in my Amazon wallet online and there was the number of my new card. Amazon knew my number before I knew it. Because I know. Isn't that crazy? That happens when you, when you cancel a credit card. Uh, that new number just gets propagated all throughout. And you're like, wait, I didn't give you the new number. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, we get it anyway. So I thought, I'm, I must be good to go. And in fact, I didn't buy anything more from Amazon uh, until after uh, I found out that my uh, account was locked. <clears throat> and the problem was... Uh, they tried to charge my new credit card, but couldn't. Apparently, I needed to designate that as my default. principal. Yeah, your default yeah, credit card. Right. Okay. But I didn't know that. And I did get uh, an email notification like 19 hours before all this started uh, on, on the day where they woke me up. And, it, you know, it just it said that we you we need to have the last two digits of your credit card and what type it is. And this, this set off some alarm bells. I thought this sounds like a scam. So I sent the email to their 
security division mm-hmm. to see if this is real or not. I okay. I'll, well, I'll, I'll okay. Well, let, let me let me back up because you're 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 giving me a nightmare. <laughs> Going through all Sorry. this, okay. <laughs> I, I like to have happy dreams. Okay, this is not happy for me. Okay, so so here's what here's here's what what I what you should have done. Okay, and so okay. to to prevent all this from going through and then you know getting in the email and then giving you know whatever is that anytime you have trouble with Amazon, okay, whether it's I didn't get my order, I got a duplicate order, I got an order I didn't order. OK, um, mm-hmm. troubling with my credit cards. I, I want to get rid of this particular person off my account, Wh- whatever it is. OK, Amazon, unlike a lot of big tech companies, I'm talking the likes of like Facebook. OK, go ahead. Try to call somebody at Facebook. Never works. There's no phone number. They don't want to hear from you. OK, unlike uh, even some divisions of Google that you can't get a hold of if you want to change your business listing is that Amazon for every for all the bad that they've done for all the good that they've done is that they've actually done a fantastic job at customer service. They do. And and the reason for that is many years ago when Amazon was being set up. Jeff Bezos, if you were in charge of a department or a product, you know what he would do? And he got we you know what he would do with a complaint Bruce that he got from somebody? No. Okay. He oh, would, is that to what he forwards it with yes, a question mark on exactly. it? Exactly. He forwards that with just a question mark. You've heard me talk about this on the show. I think that's just genius because it doesn't mean good or bad. It means what the heck. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tell me what went wrong and tell me why your department failed at this. Okay. So when you need some help at Microsoft, or pardon me, when you need some help at Amazon, you go to the support page for your account. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's a little chat box and it says, do you want to chat with somebody right now? Okay. And you're like, no, I don't. I want to have a conversation. And very small letters underneath that chat box is that there's a line that says something more or less. Do you want, do you want us to call you? Yes. I want you to call me. I want to have a conversation. And then you click that and then it will say, oh, somebody's going to call you in two minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it may be. The phone number pops up and it says 206 because they are headquartered in Seattle, Washington. You may not be talking to somebody in Seattle, but that's the number that will, the Amazon phone number will appear on your phone. And then you get to talk to somebody and you tell them your tale of woe. You tell them what's going on. You tell them what you need. And then they're going to be reviewing your account while you're talking to them because, again, they called you, so they have all their account, all your account information right in front of them. And I'll tell you, every single time I've done that, I'm going to knock on wood right now because <laughs> something bad's going to happen. But every single time I've done that, it's been less than, say, two minutes for somebody to get on the phone with me and probably two minutes for them to resolve whatever problem it is in my favor. So whenever you have trouble with Amazon, that's what I want you to do. Go to the the support page, scroll down to the bottom. No, I don't want to chat with somebody. I want to talk to somebody. And then that's how you get resolution. So Bruce, why don't you try that? And thank you for your call today. And also your kind words about all the work that we do here at the show and also our newsletter. Hey, just a quick reminder, if you're just too shy to come on a big time radio show and podcast, I totally get that. But I still want to help you out. Now, the best way for you to let me know what I can do for you, say in your digital life, maybe it's your business, because let me tell you, I started this company from scratch and I'm proud to say that we have no debt and we have no investors. And so if you're wondering about something with your business, I'm happy to help with that. Maybe you're like dealing with some family issues, some digital dilemmas, so to speak, that have to do with tech. Hey, here's what you need to do. Go to commando.com and that's K-O-M-A-N-D-O with a K, of course, commando.com. And then at the top of our homepage, there's a button that says, Ask Kim. I read every single note that you send me there. Again, that's commando.com and look for the link at the top that says, Ask Kim. If you want your internet to be blazing fast and reach every single nook and crane of your home, you have to be super smart about where you put your Wi-Fi router. If your Wi-Fi is sluggish, the router might be in the wrong spot. So here's what you want to keep in mind. 
you always want the router to be in the center of your home or the room. This way, that signal can spread out evenly and hit every single corner of your house or that home. Also, you want to put it up super high. A shelf or a wall mount would do the trick because this will reduce interference from different obstacles. But you also want to keep your router away from other electronics and large objects like your television, your microwave oven, baby monitors, or a massive couch, because these things can disrupt the signal. And always make sure it's well ventilated. You don't want it overheating. And don't stick the router in the basement or garage or even the highest floor of your house. But keep in mind, you can always swap out the Wi-Fi antenna so it shoots the signal in only one direction rather than in a circle. And don't forget to enter to win that brand new iPhone 16. Go now to winfromkim.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited. Okay, it's official. We are very much in the final sprint to Election Day. And face it, between debates, polling releases, even court appearances, it can feel exhausting, even impossible, to keep up with. I'm Brad Milkey. I'm the host of Start Here, the daily podcast from ABC News. And every morning, my team and I get you caught up on the day's news in a quick, straightforward way that's easy to understand with just enough context so you can listen, get it, and go on with your day. So kickstart your morning. Start smart with Start Here and ABC News because staying informed shouldn't feel overwhelming.